How's it going my friends? Back with another video today and I just want to start this off by saying thank you to the new Patreon subscribers and the new donors to the channel. Just want to give you guys a shout out. Uh, Gil Merrikin, Jason Stewart, Richard Kunz, Dwayne McClun. Dwayne, you are the man. You have been like one of my earliest subscribers and supporters of the channel. I think you've been around here since like one or 200 subs. And you've always reached out and given me feedback on my videos and we've had good conversations through email. So I really appreciate it. Um, and Photos T. Barth, okay? You guys are awesome and thank you so much for helping out the channel. Um, you know, your donations really, really make a difference and uh, you know, making this channel, you know, go the distance and really, really just keep growing. So I appreciate it. Um, so today I just wanted to start also start off by saying I got this little bad boy, the Nikon Z50. Okay, I had made a post yesterday on the community tab and just talked about, uh, you know, possibly picking this thing up to do a review on it. It's not going to be something that I'm reviewing from the standpoint of, you know, my professional work or bringing it to a wedding or something like that. But I just want to have a camera that's not associated with work. My Z6s, I love those cameras, but they're just associated with work. Every time I bring them out of the bags, they're, you know, it's going to a wedding or going to a photo shoot. And sometimes it's tough to just shoot for inspiration. This thing, you know, I'm, I'm just a few of my initial thoughts on it. it. Having the compactness in my hand, something very, very small that's easy to carry around in my truck, easy to have with me all the time. Uh, something that I, you know, I have this uh, 16 to 50 lens on it. It's extremely small, and it's something that is just not going to get in the way. I want to have a camera on me all the time that's better than my cell phone, but also has that same convenience of a cell phone almost. You know, so uh, this seems like it'd be a good option and I'm gonna take it around and just shoot with it for a while. You know, just shoot my kids, do some video with it, uh, test the snap bridge, test, you know, transferring photos to the phone and back and forth and just see all around how easy it is and how much it makes me wanna go out and shoot because guys, that's the point of every single camera. It's just, is it gonna get in the way of you shooting? Like. The gear is secondary. I've said this a billion times on this channel. The only thing that really matters is that you pick up the camera and you go actually go out there and make make photos. You know, I'm not uh, part of this whole, you know, photography YouTube community that's like a reality show where, you know, we're on this team or that team. I think all cameras are great. All cameras are basically at a level where they're basically all the same. And it's what feels convenient and easy for you to pick up and go out and shoot. Because that's the thing. If you just sit around all day and just talk online and go gossip about you know photo gear you most of the time those aren't the people who are actually going out and shooting and that's the most important so I just wanted something that was easy for me to shoot video of my kids and things that I see you know photos and things that I see around there so I think this is gonna be a good option I will give you guys my honest review like I always do but it's not gonna be before I go out there and actually like you know make some photos with it and really put it through the ringer uh, so today, I wanted to talk about the 35mm lens. I have a lot of new people on the channel. Welcome, you guys. But I have a lot of new people that are just getting into photography and they're asking me what they should buy for a lens for their new you know, Z system, Z6, Z7, whatever. And this goes back to the most important lens that I think for photography that exists, which is the 35 millimeter lens. I think that anybody, especially new people that are just starting, but everybody should master the 35. That focal length is so, so important for a few different reasons. I'm going to talk about that today. But if you're new, I think the 35 is the first lens that you should get and you should master. Now, I know there's people that like to shoot zooms. I know that there's different types of photography that require different focal lengths and different workflows. You know, I know that, guys. This is just my experience, and this is more for people. Uh, you know, this is I say this is more for people that want to learn how to shoot people, events, uh, weddings, portraits, you know, lifestyle, things like that. But also, you know, when I first started in photography, I was obviously doing a lot of landscape stuff. I feel like that's pretty much how everybody starts. They grab a camera, they go out and they shoot the things that they see outside. If I go back to those photos, I was using a zoom lens, but a lot of my photos were in the range of 35 millimeter. And I think it's a, it was a natural focal length for me to gravitate towards, and I'm glad that I kind of started with that because it's important, it's a very important focal length. So let me start off. The first thing that I have uh, for a point is it's a realistic point of view, okay? So the way that our eyes see, guys, we see in a certain focal length, and the closest 
of that. The, fo the closest that we can get in a lens is a 35. It's a very realistic focal length. It's kind of like people, when you're looking through your eyes and you're seeing the scene, excuse me, that's kind of like what you see. And as a photographer, I think it's super, super important that we realize that we need to master seeing the scene as somebody looking at it. Okay, if that makes sense. Like, you don't want to go into a photo shoot, especially when you're shooting people, um, unless you're, you know, doing portraits. You don't want to go in trying to do anything other than capture moments. And like, what photography is, I'm going to try and distill this into a, uh, you know, a kind of a, a thought here, but I don't know if it's going to come out right. But the photography is basically just you using your, 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 unique perspective to grab out little bits and moments from normal everyday life in an interesting way that convey your sense of meaning in the world. Okay. So life, what we see every day, it's basically, you could picture it as like a linear movie and we're just going around taking information, taking in scenes. If you can learn to find those interesting little clips throughout the day, those little clips that are around there, and you can snap them and grab them, you're going to be a very good photographer, and you're going to be able to see things in an interesting way that other people don't see. And it's very helpful if you start off with the 35 because it's a normal field of view. It's kind of like you open your eyes, that's what you see. And if you can go around, you can learn to compose in that focal length, it's going to translate well to other things and other people when they're looking at it. Very interesting perspectives, you know, multiple elements in the frame. There's, I promise you guys, every single place that you are, every single scene that you find yourself in, there's something interesting that you can learn to latch onto and grab and make a good photo out of it. That's what I used to do in the beginning. I used to say, okay, no matter where I am right now, I'm going to find, I'm going to make a good photo. So I used to look around no matter where I was. I didn't go trying, you know, obviously I'd go to interesting places, but like, even if I wasn't, I would, if I hadn't made a photo that day, I would say, okay, where am I right now? I'm going to look around and I'm going to find something. And it's just like seeing with your eye. You know, the camera is just basically an extension of you. So the realistic fo realistic uh, focal length is really, really important to remember when you're, when you're shooting. Remember, guys, I've said this before. Get low, get high, get really close, and get really far out. Okay, those four different type of perspectives, if you can use those with a normal focal length like a 35, you'll start to get really, really creative in what you see and what you can pull out of reality every single day when you're going around with your camera. Second thing is you can capture the scene, but you can also isolate with a 35. So what I mean by that is you can isolate certain elements, okay? You're going to have to learn how to get close to things, but that's honestly very, very good. I mean... One of the problems with a zoom lens, especially for new people, is they don't learn to get into the scene. And that is one of the most important things, is you have to learn to get close to people. You know, the closer you can, this might sound cliche, but the closer that you can get to somebody, the more you can really feel it in the photo. It translates. I don't know how it does, but it translates. And if you're just zooming in from a long distance or longer, you don't want to get in too close, I believe that you're selling yourself short. Now guys, this is just an opinion. I, I probably, you know, I'm not saying that you can't make great images with a 24 to 70 or 70 to 200. It's absolutely not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there is a difference in getting close and learning how to get comfortable in different close spaces to people and getting into the scene to really feel the emotion of what's going on. You can do that with a 35 and you can isolate people by getting close to them, which is great. You know, you can isolate certain, certain. you know, uh, I, we, we take detail shots sometimes with the 35. You can get close and you can have some blur in the background and some separation. Um, or you can get back further and you can capture the whole scene. It gives you that versatility. So you can get in and get out. I mean, honestly, I think, I, I know that I could do a whole wedding with the 35. Uh, obviously, some weddings, there's situations where you can't. But I just love that idea of just putting a 35 on the camera and just going out there and just shooting everything with it. Um, because it is truly a versatile lens. You can get close and isolate things. And you can get further out and capture the scene. Third is you do not... You're teaching yourself not to rely on bokeh or compression to make great photos. Um, Mick Millman and I were talking about this and we had a, we had a good conversation about, you know, um, 
it, a lot of new people and you know some older older people in photography um, I think a lot of times rely on blurred out backgrounds and compression to make a beautiful photo because it's easy if you're on a 7200 or a 105 you can just focus in on somebody it blurs out the background it compresses everything and it looks pretty but you can do that without a sense of composition or or a compelling image that's conveying a story. You can still make a, a beautiful image with a compressed background, but it's not doesn't necessarily mean that it, it's going to have a compelling story. Now, if you're making a 35 Im, an image with a 35, it, and there's no compression. You know, a lot of things are in focus. There's not a really a strong bokeh background blur or anything like that. You really have to have a compelling composition something that's telling a story for the image to really make sense and to be gripping. And I think that it's important, especially as new people, to learn how to compose things in interesting ways and not just blur out the background so you get this like pretty blurred out effect. I think that's super, super important, guys. And it, like I said, it doesn't mean that, you know, there's no uses for compression or bokeh or anything. Of course not. Like that stuff is important. But I believe that it's very, very important for people to learn composition to make things beautiful and gripping images that tell stories and multiple elements in the frame bringing together to create a story um, that's the real photography and that's the stuff that's going to last i mean you know I, I i've talked about this before too you know the elements that bring together a photo with like a wow factor like you know crazy lighting or crazy blurred out or crazy compression those are not those are cool but those are not the element those are not the photos that are going to create a real true sense of depth that lasts the test of time i mean it's really about composition and bringing together a story in your frame and the 35 is the best focal length for that if you can master it with the 35 you will be on your way to being a great photographer uh, that, those are really just the points that I had. It was just a quick video on the 35 because a lot of people have been asking me what lens they should get. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, as always, love to hear your thoughts. The comments are great. You know, everybody talking and like helping out other people and sharing their perspectives. It's awesome. I try and reply to everybody. So please uh, let me know your thoughts on the video and I uh, appreciate all the uh, new subscribers and everybody contributing to the conversation in the community, guys. Till the next video.